please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2020. There are two mathematics exams, one for social sciences, mathematics A, and another for natural sciences, mathematics B. This problem is from the 2020 Mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. This is part two of problem three, and we are asked to find the area S of the figure A, which is bounded by C and the X axis. So the figure A is defined as the figure bounded by C, which is this curve, and bounded by the X axis. Let us list down a few items that might help us solve the problem. First is that the area S bounded by C and the X axis is actually the sum of the areas of the individual parts. So that's what this first part means. So this means that the area S, the total area S is actually the sum of this area here. For example, this curve here is the, is the curve C. So the area S is the sum of the area here, the area here, and the area here. That's what this means. And you see S sub I is actually the area. That's the integral of Y with respect to X. So that's the area from X sub 1 to X sub 1 plus, rather X sub I to X sub I plus 1. So for example, for this area here, that's from X sub i to x sub i plus 1. So this is that s sub i here. And we see that we put absolute value symbols here because we want the positive area. So the area here should be positive, here should be positive, here should be positive. And we need that absolute value symbol because we know that if the curve falls below the x-axis, then the area there is negative. So if you just compute the integral, of this region here from x of theta i to x of theta i plus 1, then you're going to get a negative value. And we do not want to add that to the area. We, we want the positive areas to add up. So if it's negative, we need to get the absolute value. And, this is, and that's what this means here. We need to find the absolute values of the area. So it's, it's important that we know where the y becomes negative. If the y's are all positive, then we don't have a problem because it's just one whole big area. But if there are regions where the y, the y's are negative, then we need to find those. And lastly, okay, so this is just an illustration where the area is positive. This is when y is positive and the areas here are also positive. But down here, we have y's that are negative, And so the area here, S sub i, are also negative. And lastly, we have Wally's formula. So this is a convenient formula. You don't really need this for this problem, but this is going to help our integration. It's going to make it quick. So Wally's formula says that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine raised to the nth power d theta is equal to the integral of cosine raised to the nth power. So the important part here is the, the important parts here are the limits of integration. It should be from 0 to pi over 2. Here it should be 0 to pi over 2. And then the exponents should be the same, n, n. Now if you have this, this can be easily evaluated using the following formula. So if n is even, if n is even, then all you need to do is attach a pi over 2 here at the end, and then you start by putting n in the denominator, then subtract 1, put it in the numerator, Subtract, an, subtract another one, put it in the denominator, subtract another one, put it in the numerator, and do this all the way to one half. And this product is the 
definite integral that we're looking for. Now, if n is odd, then we chuck in 1 here. And then the same thing, we just start with n in the denominator, subtract 1, put it in the numerator, subtract 1, put it in the denominator, subtract 1, put it in the numerator. Do it, do it again and again until you reach 2 thirds here. You see, after 2, you subtract 1, then it will be 1 in the denominator here. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy to remember this way. So this is going to make the integration a little bit easier for us. So let's just copy the key ideas that we had in the previous slide, put it here. And now we recall from, from this second idea here that if we have a curve that if we have a part of the curve that is below the x-axis, then this area here will be negative. And we do not want to add a negative area. We want to, to get the absolute value of this. And so the first step in our process is to actually find the locations of the uh, on the curve where the y's are negative. So we want to find if any, these regions in here. So let's find that. We, we will do that first. And then if there are y's that are below the x-axis, we will have to compute the areas separately. So we need to compute the area here, and then we need to compute the area here, and then we need to compute the area here. And we do them separately. Because again, this will be negative, here will be positive and positive, but we have to turn them all into positive. So we'll get the absolute values of all these. So let's do this. Let's first do looking for the values where y is uh, or y are negative. We start with the value for y, which is y of theta equals 1 minus cosine theta. And the problem states that the theta will be between 0 and 2 pi. If that is the case, then we start with trigonometry to see if this value of y, if any of these values actually go below 0. So we're, that's what we're going to try to find out. So we start with trigonometry. We know from trigonometry that the value of cosine theta for any theta actually falls between negative 1 and 1. Now, our goal is to, derive, is to arrive at this expression here from this starting point. So we want to get 1 minus cosine theta and see if that is ever less than 0. So we chuck in a negative sign here, and we do that by multiplying negative 1 to all sides of this, of this inequality. And when we do that, we obtain this. So the inequality symbols flip, and then we get a negative sign here. We lose the negative sign here. We get a negative sign here. And then we just add 1 on all sides. And now this is what we get. We get 1 plus 1, 1 minus cosine theta, 1 minus 1. So now we have this bit here, here. And we can replace it with y of theta. So we get 2 is greater than or equal to y of theta is greater than or equal to 0. What this tells us is that y of theta never falls below 0. So it's always positive. And in fact, it's always less than or equal to 2. And because we know this, now we do not even have to break the integral. So we do not have to worry about this because we now know that our y's are all positive. Everything falls above the x-axis. And so we just need to find the limits here now. So the limits here would be from the from where theta is 0, because that's the limit here, 0 to 2 pi. So that's what we'll do. And again, we, we've just said that we don't have to worry about this anymore, so we do not have to compute the area separately, because y's, the y's here are all greater than or equal to 0. And so our integral is from x0 to x sub n. Again, x sub 0 is just when theta equals 0, and x sub n is just when theta is 2 pi. And we'll do that in the next slide. Now let's do the integral. 
Again, the area is given by this integral here. So here, x sub 0 is the leftmost point of the interval, and x sub n is the rightmost point of the interval. And we have to integrate y dx. And that will give us the area. Now, in our given, x sub 0 is actually 0. So it's the leftmost point of our interval. And x sub n is actually 2 pi. That's the rightmost point of our interval. And in fact, in this case, th we are now looking at pi, or rather, uh, theta. So this is actually theta equals 0 is the leftmost point of our interval. And theta equals 2 pi is the rightmost part of our interval. And that's because we change variable from x to theta. The reason we change variables is because we are given in terms of theta. We are given functions in terms of theta. So it will be easier to actually do the integration in theta rather than in x. And the way we changed variables is for y, it's easy because we are given the values, the value of y already. So we just put there y of theta. And dx, we know how to get d theta from dx. And that's simply the derivative of x with respect to theta. That's dx d theta times the differential d theta. And so we replace this dx with this expression here. And that's what we get here. And now this whole integral is in terms of theta. And that's why our limits of integration are also in terms of theta, 0 to 2 pi. Now we replace y of theta with the expression that was given we replace dx d theta with the expression that we solved for and now we can continue the multiplication and we get this and then we can separate the integral into three terms and now here this bit is actually easy to integrate this bit goes to zero and this bit we can use wallace formula now I'll just remind ourselves why this goes to zero. That's because we're integrating from zero to two pi and we're integrating a cosine function. And if you recall, if you have a cosine function, it will look something like this. Here would be two pi. Here it's maximum at one and here it's maximum at one and this is at zero. And what we know is that the area under this is positive because it's above y and here is also positive and here the area would be negative because it's below y y equals zero below the y-axis and actually the shape of this one is like one half the shape of this one and this is also this shape is also one half of the shape of this one and therefore if you add their areas the area of this one and this one would actually equal in magnitude to the area of this whole thing here and so if you add them all together you get a zero and so this part of the integration would go to zero now the last term is very much like this however the upper limit of integration is 2 pi and here we are given pi over 2 so let's convert this into an expression where we have a pi over 2 in the upper limit of integration and this is actually what we get. We get four times this. The reason for that is if this is the the area for cosine of pi, if we square cosine of pi, meaning if you want to get cosine squared, what we do is we actually square we, we square each of the terms here and and so this part of the area would be squared. So the maximum is still one, so it remains there, but the shape will be altered. And then here at pi over two, so this bit here is pi over two when it goes to zero, instead of a negative area here, because it's squared, the square of a negative number is also a positive number. So it goes up, goes up like that. And here we have pi. And then the same is true with this other half. It also is above the y-axis so now it looks like that and also this bit here is just actually symmetric to the first bit so just gonna look like that and now because all these four areas actually have the same shape the same area under them and the reason for that is well um, the sine curve is or the cosine curve is actually symmetric with respect to, for example, in this case here, 
the, the middle the middle point the the crest so to speak so the the area here is same as here as here as here and we also know that that is taken from 0 to pi over 2 and again here is another pi over 2 pi over 2 and another pi over 2 and so we have four times the area here which is given by this expression out here and now we just need to apply Wally's formula so 2 pi then the 4 here goes here then for Wally's formula we we see that this is even the exponent is even so we start with the exponent here which is 2 then we subtract 1 we get 1 however that is the last term here so we've reached the last term which is 1 half and so the next term would be pi over 2 and we just do the arithmetic there 2 pi plus 4 cancels with 2 and 2 so we get pi here and we get 3 pi if you learned something new today please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications see ya